Oh yeah. Feeling good today. Uh, welcome everyone to the Steam Belly Pocket Dimension. Uh, my Pocket Dimension Denizens, the Steam Belly Sore Rats. Welcome, one and all, uh, to another episode of uh, the Character Corridor. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Leander Steam Belly, and uh, feel pretty good today. Gonna knock out long existing problems. Gonna start knocking those off the list. Uh, and today it is. With the help of uh, the guest that you'll be able to hear, Zashel, legal mind extraordinaire, going to help me solve the federal work industries issue, as well as the lingering Pedrin Stroganoff problem. Well, you'll hear it, but uh, man, that guy really knows what he's doing. And, fingers crossed, uh, we might just end up being a lot closer than... I thought we were going to be when he sat down to talk to me. Speaking of which, you know, life takes funny turns from time to time, and I'm sure you've <laughs> heard me in my previous intros uh, allude to a budding relationship that I was pursuing and hoping would go further. Unfortunately... I can now officially report that that is dead in the water. Uh, it seems that, if you recall from the last episode, uh, I made mention that uh, this individual wished that I wouldn't speak about him into the whisper jar. And I apparently mentioning that request was doing the exact thing, namely talking about the potential relationship, uh, the one thing he requested that I not do. So that is done. And it's... I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, it's disappointing. I was uh, very much enjoying it and looking forward to it progressing further, but... That is not the case. We're just two different individuals. He uh, was more of an outdoor type. I'm more of an indoor type. He was uh, more of a community or tribal individual. I'm more of a loner. And you know what? I, I don't even know why I am being coy about it anymore. It is over. We're still going to be friends, but there's nothing beyond that. And some of you have put this together already, but um, it's it. The individual in question is Goratan. We really hit it off uh, during our conversation and started spending more time together. And you know, when we went out uh, at the end of that interview looking for some sushi, uh, we never quite got around to that, but we did do a lot of puddle jumping, which was a lot of fun. And um, good dude, still a good dude. Uh, like it very much, but, um, yeah, it just turned out it is, you know, not to be. He never could understand why it was that I needed to talk about that relationship, as well as so many other things, uh, here into the Whisper Jar so that you could hear it on your sending stones. And I, I want to be perfectly fair to Goraton. Uh, it, this was not a issue of being ashamed of the relationship. It was not an issue of trying to hide me. He was perfectly happy going out, being seen in public, talking with uh, his friends and cohorts. He just didn't seem to understand why I needed to share all these details with, let's face it, strangers. I don't know. That's a, that's a real good question, I guess. I'm going to have to do a little soul searching. But the fact of the matter is that, uh, at least for now, I do, much to your benefit, because you get to enjoy this wonderful entertainment, and, well, there are not only other fish in the sea, but Decker's still out there. You know, I, I, I got my fingers crossed. But uh, today, uh, coming up right now, Zashel, you'll hear exactly what it is that, uh, He's helping me with. So here we go, everybody.
Uh, hey, uh, no, no, come on in. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, no, uh, either one of those tools is fine. Uh, can I get you anything? Um, sure. I would love some tea. Uh, try. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, just once. Ooh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I don't have any tea. I'm sorry. Is there anything else? Um, coffee? Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, no, no coffee either. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe something to eat. Um, sure, I, uh, what, whatever, whatever you have is, is fine. Okay, uh, let me get you, uh, I have good berries. Let me get you a good berry. I just oh, need to I've find... I've a good berry. Uh, they're, they're fantastic. They're, uh, very revitalizing. Uh, you're gonna love it. I just need to find the magic rat that poops out the good berries. Hold on one second. Uh, you, I, you know what? I, I'm actually. I just. I just ate. I'm. I'm actually fine. I was just being polite. Uh, I don't right, need well, anything. Thank you sure, for the offer. You're sure? Because uh, it's really no trouble. Like I can certainly get. Uh, find this thing. Yeah. No. 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 Not a problem. It's. I. I was just trying to be polite. That, okay. Well. I, look. I appreciate that. Uh. But. Uh, trust me. Uh. No reason to be polite down here. Uh. You're the one. Uh. Doing me the big favor. So. Uh. Just uh, want to make sure you are comfortable and that uh, there is nothing uh, that could potentially distract you and that your mind is sharp and focused on the problem at hand. Uh, as you know, yeah. or, 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 or perhaps you know, don't have all the details, uh, but uh, I found myself in a bit of uh, legal trouble. And uh, yeah, I've uh, I've looked over the the parchment that was sent. I'm assuming by you. Oh uh, yes, or somebody yeah i've looked over the the cases that you brought forward okay so great uh and uh it, it you know uh, that's wonderful and i am glad that you have uh taken both the time to familiarize yourself with the case before uh coming down here as well as making the actual journey here into the steam belly pocket dimension to uh, uh talk with me uh but truth be told i don't really know a lot about you i mean your name was recommended to me by a couple individuals but uh i want to make sure that you're not well i, I don't mean any disrespect but i i want to make sure you know what you're talking about if that's all right so uh do, do you mind if i ask you a few questions about yourself before we get involved in, in the legal case here no no no, no. I, I fully understand you need to vet your your potential hire, so please. Oh, that is refreshing. A very reasonable and rational answer. Uh, I, I truly appreciate that, Sashel. So uh, why don't you tell me, how uh, how did you get into the law? I started off looking into um, a wrongful death case. Um, there was a an individual who hired a group of adventurers and then did not fully brief them on the situation into which he was throwing them. There was a uh, loss of life. And so I much, much later uh, took it upon myself to review the specifics of the case and uh, bring action against the hiring individual. It's, it's part of what actually led me to acquisitions incorporated as an employer. Uh, the codification of adventuring hiring, adventuring information, and things like that served to make sure that there would be no, or at least fewer, situations like the one in which my parents found themselves. Oh, so this wasn't just some random individuals that you were investigating. It, it, this had, this, you had a personal connection to it. This, this had to do with your parents. Yes, yes. Uh, my father, Kriv, uh, and his wife, Jenin, were adventurers and had been hired to retrieve... Uh, actually, they had been hired to simply investigate an ancient temple which was said to be abandoned and simply find anything interesting. Sort of a, a light salvage mission, if you will. Um, and it turned out that was not at all the case. Um, the hiring party was... Um, trying to retrieve a very specific thing and um, 
did not quite inform my parents were with a were with an entire party at the time um it, he didn't inform the party that there were occupants of said temple and that uh they would be fervently protecting the contents therein I see. So it sounds like the legal action was against the hiring party uh, for Correct. intentionally withholding information that would be necessary to the party of which your parents were members. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there was they they went in thinking that this would be a fairly light dungeon crawl type, you know maybe a couple random beasts or monstrosities that had moved in. They were not anticipating an entire settled civilization that was uh, utilizing the temple for uh, hatchery and things like that. Oh, and, that sounds like a pretty sticky situation your parents found yourself in. How the, how they managed to get out of that one? Uh, well, my mother, Jenin, did not. She was killed in the escape. Uh, the yuan Ti creatures who were inhabiting the temple um, are highly venomous. Some of the, the, the more, I hate to use the term advanced, but shall we say the more devout to their snake gods. Uh, there were multiple struggles, multiple combats. My father, Kriv, managed to escape with my egg. Um, I knew my mother briefly. And then I was raised in a, wonderful village not far from uh where i am now in salt marsh here's a here's a here's a business card by the way for the uh lighthouse franchise oh thank you very much i uh oh as soon as i find it i'll put this uh in the same place i i have my rat um now there's there's a lot to unpack here so so give me a second uh first uh let me apologize uh for uh being flippant i, I am sorry uh that your mother lost her life uh that is horrible. I too know the pain of losing a parent. When I was relatively young, my parents went off to market to to sell our, you know, the goods that uh, they uh, harvested from our farm, and simply never returned. So I can empathize uh, with the loss of a parent. I am sorry, my. Parents were, you know, at least in a very dangerous line of work to begin with, but simply going to market, that's, that is genuinely terrible. Yeah, it was, uh, needless to say, a, a uh, traumatic and formative event in my life, but uh, look at how well I turned out. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, sometimes yes. the... Uh, Hurdles that we must uh, clear only serve to r raise our spirit. Um, now, I'm going to tread a little delicately here because uh, there's some confusion. I've got some confusion about this. You mentioned that the adventuring party that your parents were in encountered a lot of uh, yon uh in uh, this uh, environment. And it, it normally I would not comment on such a thing, but it is plainly obvious that you yourself are a yon Um Correct. So were were your parents also young T? Is is I I I'm I'm a little unclear. You mentioned that your parents took an egg. I, I what? How did they feel going in and, and and encountering um not only people of their own species but the people that were hostile to them? Uh, well, like I said, my my parents are not. Let me let me clarify. Uh. When I refer to my parents, Kriv and Jenin, they are my adoptive parents. Kriv is a dragonborn, and uh, my mother, Jenin, was human. Uh, my actual birth parents, egg parents, uh, regardless, I never knew them. And knowing the things that I know about the Auntie civilization and the things that were 
going on in that temple, uh, I consider myself actually very lucky to have been raised instead in the environment in which I was raised. My father, Kriv, is a very um, generous person. He is very uh, supportive in all of my endeavors. And so given that as a pure blood, air quotes, uh, we would, we being my parents, my actual birth parents and myself would be among the lowest caste of Yonti civilization. Um, I, I am perfectly happy, completely separating myself from that culture and instead embracing the work I have done with Acquisitions Incorporated and the, uh, the lessons that I have learned from my father, Craig. Does that clarify things? Yeah, uh, it clarifies quite a bit. And uh, I have to compliment you on your uh, extremely uh, positive attitude about a rather traumatic uh, upbringing and uh, early life experience. Those are quite uh, formative for any individual. And the fact that you have spent the time to reflect on it and uh, come to such a uh, positive conclusion and turn that into a real strength uh, going forward, that uh, that is uh, commendable. Uh, so kudos to you. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, several times your work with Acquisitions Inc. and how this experience uh, sort of formed your uh, desire to do work in an area where there is fairly explicit codification of the rules. Tell me, how did you find yourself uh, coming to work for Acquisitions Inc., particularly as someone uh, with, you know, just legal skills, but not, not much beyond that? Uh, well, I found myself in Saltmarsh at the uh, suggestion of a third party, uh, a friend of the family, if you will, uh, who explained that there would be a new franchise going up in uh, Saltmarsh. I, I did not know at the time that there had been a previous franchise there, uh, but I figured that was as good a place as any to get in on the ground floor, uh, start building up a franchise that could... Uh, support the local community while also maintaining the the a dedication to to uh, kind of to adventuring normalization, if you will, uh, that Acquisitions Incorporated uh, handles. Uh, there is, it turns out, quite a lot going on in the uh, area that is in need of handling, as it were. Um, we have certainly handled some local problems and then some more, not quite international, but um, relations between Salt Marsh and its surrounding civilizations as well. We have dealt with the Eladrin of the Silver Stand. We have dealt with um, a fallen abbey, which was founded originally by residents of Salt Marsh. And we've even dealt and started to create a solid alliance, as it were, between uh, the Saltmarsh residents and a local group of lizard folk who had been, for very many years, their steadfast enemies. So it's it has been a rather busy few months, admittedly, but I think the results of our work will stand for themselves. Well, I, I, I got to say, Zashel, uh, I'm getting real good vibes over here. Uh, the dedication to rule of law and your experience uh, almost as a diplomat with all of these, you know, different uh, civilizations and, and uh, uh, societies. It's the exact kind of skill that I need brought to bear. Uh, to my uh, two legal problems. Uh, furthermore, right, although 
I don't know much about Acquisitions, Inc. I certainly have the trust at this point that with your dedication to the rule of law that uh, you would not be here if this was not okay with Acquisitions, Inc. So I, I, I feel perfectly comfortable with you. I feel perfectly comfortable with your association with Acquisitions, Inc. and that these two things won't uh, interfere with each other. But um, you did mention uh, this third party that seems to have played a pretty important part uh in your life and, and 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 may in fact still play an important part in your life having been the one to introduce you uh to acquisitions inc and having already found myself in legal trouble as a result of my own entanglements with outside sources i hope you don't mind if i pry just a little bit more and ask if you could tell me a little bit more about this mysterious third party um small small point of order uh before that um yes it is it is not it is simply a dedication to the rule of law as some sort of force of good it is it is more a utilization of existing laws to affect the outcomes which are beneficial to either my clients or myself or um, any other interested parties. I just want to make that clarification so that uh, well, that's... we are aware that if if there are things that need to be, shall we say, massaged or finagled a bit to uh, achieve a desired outcome, as long as they are still within the letter, if not the spirit, that is that is not something that you would need to concern yourself with. <laughs> well, that that that's even better, Zashel. Uh and, and quite frankly, I'm not surprised. Uh, you you are a lawyer. Sorry, my other sending stone. Uh, yes, uh, I would also like to point out, uh, since I have not mentioned that several of the more recent employees of our franchise members of our franchise, I should say, uh, were also previously in precarious legal situations, and we were able to affect a change that allowed them to leave the situation in which they found themselves and also come out ahead. So if concern for your legal situation as it stands uh, is at the forefront, then please rest assured you are in experienced hands well i i do appreciate that but uh based on our conversation and my keen insight uh i am not shocked to learn that uh you have a very strong winning record <laughs> so uh I, I do pride myself so once again uh, I, I i don't mean to pry but uh the only question i've really got you know, at this point is what is up with this mysterious third party and what sort of, uh, you know, allegiance do you have to them? It's, it's the only uh, sort of stumbling block that I could uh, imagine might get in the way. I just want to make sure whatever legal work you're going to do for me isn't going to interfere with them or they're not going to decide at some point that they want to be involved. You you understand, of course, that there is a a certain amount of secrecy that must be maintained. But I will say that uh, my benefactor, who supplies me with a certain amount of my own abilities, uh, and as I said, a, a rather longtime friend of my family, uh, they were actually already even long before i was born keeping an eye on uh certain members of my family which has admittedly there were certain uh issues there were certain failures and derelictions of duty but rest assured this is not an issue that should come up in this situation my my benefactor certainly has the 
best interest of the larger environment, especially uh, in the areas in which I find myself, a desire for... What's the best term here? Um, unification? No, that sounds too culty. Um, improving of relations between certain parties, of which the members of the Salt Marsh community and, and most of uh, the human race finds itself. So uh, there is no need to fear. This is, um, well, if, if, depending on how far this sending jar will actually go, uh, my benefactor, a certain celestial being, is um, certainly out for the best interests of the mortal realm. This is a duty they have performed for oof, uh, several centuries, as, as far as I am aware. Um, so there is no need to worry that there will be any sort of conflict between my actions here on your behalf and anything my benefactor might uh, take part in or interest themselves in. Holy moly, uh, 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 true life uh, relationship with a centuries old celestial being that, uh, yes, wow, that, 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 that's that gotta be something. I, uh, I'm not foreign to the idea of a benefactor. Uh, I've got a, a sweet little benefactor that, uh, assists me and grants me some pretty nifty, uh, powers, uh, right here by my side, my old hand crossbow. Look at her, isn't she beauty? Uh, and uh, only got more impressive since I, my sister turned to goo and I, I strung her up as as the the drawstring. Oh. It's uh oh look it, 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 yeah it, 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 it it's a lovely bit. That I, I was sorry that uh, Leonella lost her human form, but uh, it it it. It's great to have her, and uh, now she's always by my side, always helping me out to fight. Isn't it, it, that a beaut? Uh, yes, that is that is certainly a thing. Um, I I am sorry for the loss of your sister. Oh, not loss, not loss. Transformation. Right. transformation, transformation. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, I see that easy. You said you're mute, Leonella. <laughs> Yes, I. I myself have three sisters and and one brother, so I fully can understand your um, reticence to lose that sort of fam familial relationship. I must admit that transformation into a goo crossbow string is certainly an innovative approach. Yeah, I, no one was as shocked as I was when I, when I first found her this way, but uh, I just consider myself lucky that I found her and uh, could be happier that uh, she's by my side because, as as you clearly know, a uh, uh, sibling relationship, very important and uh, very precious. Uh, would you describe your relationship with your uh, sisters and your brother in that sort of way? Yes, as as the eldest in the among the siblings, it is, you know, the, the duty of the older siblings to care for the youngest. And I certainly helped my father with that as much as I was able. And, uh, the siblings and, uh, were they also, uh, from eggs that were, uh, obtained by your parents or were they, uh, uh, no, um, Following the loss of my mother, my father gave up the adventuring business uh, almost entirely, and instead he made it a mission to care for the children of other adventurers who had been lost in their adventures as well. Uh, my brother, Taryn, lost his parents to bandits. My sisters, uh, Kithri and Serafina, uh, halflings, are... Um, their parents were lost in an ogre raid at a very young age. Um, and then, uh, Sariva, my youngest sister, a dragonborn, um, her parents were lost, uh, defending the village actually. And so my father, Kriv, 
took her in as well. And so it has been a rewarding institution to be able to uh, care for them and, and help them through the difficult times. My, my brother Taryn came when he was uh, far older. Sariva was simply an egg when her parents were lost and Kithri and Serafina were, were very young, but Taryn was much older uh, and simply was, it was far more difficult for him to accept the change in his situation. So being able to provide an anchor point to what is a tumultuous time, I am sure uh, for him was a necessary part of older siblingship. Uh, that sounds like an incredibly loving family and what a unique and encouraging individual your, your father must be to have adopted uh, all of these orphans. Uh, it uh, brings brings a little tear to my eye, uh, quite frankly. And and you say he uh, uh, has adopted children who have lo lost their parents. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. He, especially adventuring parties, the, the fact that he was adventuring when my mother, Jenin, was killed resonated with him. And so the, as much as he would prefer to not have to adopt children as in their parents should stop adventuring. He understands that there are, as with Sariva's parents, certain times where that is and not really the way things happen, where adventure may fall upon them rather than them seeking out adventure as with Terrence's parents. Yes, no, absolutely. And uh, it's certainly a dangerous line of work and to have, to know that there's an individual out there who is looking out for the children of adventurers, it, it, it's really something. And, uh, you know, particularly, as you said, uh, it's not always that people go out looking for adventure. Sometimes adventure uh, falls upon them. And, uh, you know, there's the traditional uh, definition of adventuring. Um, but, you know, some people might say that, you know, taking your produce out to the market is in its own way sort of an adventure. Indeed, indeed, I, I I agree. There, there is a certain amount of risk involved, especially in many more fringe uh, settlements, where even the simplest of activity can be. dangerous depending on the local environment right so we're 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 right on the same page uh you know uh a brother and sister whose parents went off uh to sell goods at at, at the local market uh they could be said to have been orphaned right because their parents had adventure fall upon them exactly as with Kithri's parents. Right. So do, do, you, do, you, do you think your father might be interested? You know a pair of recently orphaned children? Well, uh, I mean, depending on the definition of recently, uh, yes, I, I, I do. Uh, uh, Leonella and I lost our parents. Uh, oh, oh, you, you're asking, I see, um, I can certainly ask, but... uh, uh, look, I mean, I know it's, it might seem a little weird, right? But there's never an age where an individual, um, couldn't benefit from a positive parental relationship. Certainly true. Certainly true. There is also the the matter of most individuals desiring uh, some sort of existing family structure. Uh, although 
admittedly, with my fellow franchisees, I have found a sort of second family there, which I understand is a thing that exists for people. Uh, so it, you, judging by your uh, armaments and your uh, current residence, uh, seem to be also in the adventuring business that uh, did you find a an adventuring party to whom you oh, yes. were attached? Oh yes. Uh, I have done uh, fairly extensive adventuring. Um, I still miss Sidori and uh, hell, even David, that crazy son of a bitch. Uh, to this day, uh, we had uh, some great fun and were, I think, well on our way to making a real mark in the world. But things happened, and, well, that entire universe seems to have found itself in some sort of stasis. Uh, oh. But... Um, a little thing like uh, universe being put on pause can't stop Leander. I managed to find my way uh, into Waterdeep, and uh, there, Super Splendor. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, there, I met uh, the uh, Splendor of my life, uh, Decker, and uh, have been uh, following her around, doing what I can to help her out and impress her, and uh, show her that I am a worthy individual. And through her, I met this new adventuring party. I uh, went and helped them out a little bit. There is the... Mm, I don't want to say unfortunate. But let's just call it unexpected side effect that uh, <laughs> I uh, have found myself in that universe to have been resurrected as a lizard person, which... Uh, Solid people. Solid people. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean to... Uh, no dispersion toward lizard people in general. I'm just saying you can imagine you go off into a fight as a human and wake up in bed as a lizard folk. Uh, there's going to be some questions. <laughs> I cannot say I have ever been in that situation. But uh... yeah, it's weird, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little weird. Uh, but, you know. So I've I've done a fair bit of adventuring myself, but uh, and I, I I do understand that the adventuring party does become a family, and it uh, particularly as an orphan, uh, it 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 feels a very nice sort of surrogate uh, role there. But uh, as you can tell, no one gets between me and my sister. <laughs> Your sister crossbow. Right. Oh, yeah. That's, that's absolutely right. Always right here on my side and ready to help me out. Oh. It, I, I apologize if this is a uh, sensitive question. Uh, you, you said you were from a different universe that got put on, put in stasis on pause. Was your sister from that universe, from this universe, or... Was there some crossover with you? Oh, no. We we were both from that universe, right? And, uh, you know, she she fell into this uh, big vat of goo, right? I, of course, right, uh, dove right in after. Well, not quite right in. I had to get down to my skivvies because I uh, don't want to mess up the, the loves and duds here. But uh, just as quick as I could, stripped them down, dove right in. Uh, was able to uh, retrieve, well, what was left of her, which was this goo. Uh, wore her around my neck for a while uh, when I thought it was just a weird little uh, uh, goo thing that was talking to me. But as it started talking more, I realized, oh, th this is, in fact, my sister. And uh, hmm. it then occurred to me, hey, this is pretty pliant. Right, it it has about the same shape and about the same weight as the current drawstring on my crossbow. Let me try this out, and boom! As soon as I did that, 
all sorts of great things started happening. I was able to uh, see in the dark a lot better. I gained a bunch of uh, additional abilities, and uh, one of which actually was the ability to create this pocket dimension for myself, and which allows me to sort of move in and out through, you know, uh, uh, different universes. It it it, it really uh, rather impressive. I, I don't know what's in that goo, but uh, I'm not saying that I prefer this version of Leonella uh, to the flesh and blood version, but uh, let's just say this version has some advantages too. <laughs> I'm confused about one thing. If she fell into the vat of goo and turned into the goo, how, how did you separate her goo from the vat goo? Well, that's a really interesting question. Uh, really, I just sort of put my hands out uh, almost like a sieve, right? And this is what was left in my hands. It just wouldn't, everything else would sort of run through my fingers, right? But this little this little bit, right, it started to run through and then it would sort of wrap itself around my fingers and then started crawling up my arm and I started uh, playing with it. And like I said, at first, I didn't know that that was Leonella. Like, I just uh, thought I found this neat little uh, pet, if you will. Right. But it was shortly thereafter that uh, she started talking to me and. uh it doesn't take much conversation to realize that, oh yeah, that that that's my that's my sister Leonella right there. Just, I, I I consider myself very fortunate to have found her. I I mean, as you pointed out, like it it's big puddle of goo. Like find finding your sister in that, it's like uh find a needle in a haystack. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm glad you were able to find her and, and keep her as a part of you. That's very important. Yeah. So I, I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, I'm, I got to tell you, uh, she will be thrilled to hear that we've potentially got a new father and a new family uh, on the way. Uh, I'm, you know, not going to put uh, too many eggs in this one basket. I know it's a long oh, shot. Man. But uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, you even asking, brother. I, I mean, Satchel, sorry. Right. Yeah, let me just make a note to do that so that I don't forget. Okay. So, well, All right. Look, I, I'm, I'm feeling real good right about now. Do you, do you think you want to talk about these legal issues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand that you are facing several suits on uh, behalf of Fettelwork Industries and one Panrin Stroganoff. Yes, yeah, so that's I, that's correct. Um, are are you aware of the recent development with the latter of those two entities? Well, no. I mean, if, if you mean the. He, he, he said he was going to take me for all I was worth. Then th that's the latest development I'm aware of with Mr. Stroganoff. Okay. Um, it, it would seem that we can disregard the suit from uh, Panarin Stroganoff. Uh, apparently there was an incident. Uh, something happened. Seramorphosis was involved. And Panarin Stroganoff is no longer a living entity capable of bringing suit against you. Hot damn, Zashel, you are good. Yeah, I, I, yes, sure. I, I didn't really have anything to do with that one. The one among... humble too. That's fucking great. The suit on behalf of Fettelwork Industries alleges that there was an incident with another party. Could you kind yeah, of clarify that? For absolutely. Me? There's a name in here, but nothing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, when he came in for his interview, uh, well, discussion really, um, he brought his assistant with him, a woman named Melissa. Uh, she went okay. uh, right down that corridor there, uh, mm -hmm. looking, I believe it was for some coffee for us. 
and uh, never returned. And now Federal Work Industries is trying to take me for all I'm worth because they are uh, claiming, among other things, uh, hazardous workplace, disregard for human life. Uh, there's a bunch of claims about uh, toxic environment and uh, workplace safe and healthy laws that I don't quite understand. Uh, but yes, the, the, the woman's name was Melissa. Okay. And when uh, Mr. Fettelwork came here for his conversation, as you put it, was there any sort of paperwork to go along with that contract? or agreements or well, or anything along those lines? Well, I mean, I didn't have any paperwork. Like, I just invited him in to sit down and have a conversation. Uh, he and Melissa did have what could conservatively be called uh, reams of paperwork, but uh, Begmo did assure me that all of that was just... Uh, related to continued use of his sending stone network to broadcast uh, this particular show and that it was all, you know, sort of perfunctory. So I just, I just signed all of it. Oh, oh okay. That's good to know. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a copy or do I, should I? Oh, no, I don't have any need for that. Stuff. It's all perfunctory. Right. Do you, do you, happen to have the contact information for Mr. Fettelwork that I would be able to procure a copy of said paperwork. Uh, yeah, uh, hold on one second. Uh, Beckmo did, uh, or if you are an employee of Beckmo did, I know one of you is out there and listen to this. Uh, my man's Ashel here needs to get in touch with you. Okay. Yeah. I think, I, th I think you're good. Well, I've had worse communication, I suppose. And uh, in terms of complaints, they allege toxic workplace based on what exactly? Well, I, th I think they were referring to the the, the active uh, sewage flow right down there. <laughs> okay, but there's no poison or anything in the air, right? Well, as far as we know, I mean, I'm breathing just fine. How are you breathing? I, yes, I mean, the smell is certainly something, but... Yeah, but that you get used to. I'll take your word on that, but, you know, I'm not choking or anything like that on the air here, so it can't be too bad. Um, what about... Uh, have you ever encountered any sort of creatures down here? Is there any reason to believe that you or anyone else down here would be unsafe? Not a one. The only two living things that are regularly down here are me and my sister slash uh, crossbow drawstring slash talent booker uh, Lionel Steve Belly and the occasional guest such as yourself. That's all, all we've ever encountered. Mm. Well, we, mm. Is there that, something you that's all that's all we usually encounter uh there was a problem last week i had my man razik in here and we were talking and uh, <laughs> there was uh I, I don't know if it was a voice or a thing or an entity or even if we were still here, but there was something else, and uh, it was uninvited. What sort of something else could you describe its appearance? I could not. I never saw it. I just heard it. Uh, it had a rather sort of soothing voice uh, but before we heard it sort of time slowed way down and then after it said its piece 
uh, time sort of sped back up. And uh, I'm at a real loss. I got to be honest with you. But you're a pretty bright guy. Maybe maybe you know uh, something about her or, or somebody who might. Um, I can't say that I am exceedingly familiar with what this sort of entity might be. My benefactor might have a little, shall we say, lead into someone who might be able to. We can we can discuss that uh, in a moment. Um, the period where time slowed down, would you say that that was longer or shorter, relative normal time, of course, uh, than the period where time sped up? I'm... No, it if, was... It, it definitely took longer for time to slow down. No, oh. well, I mean, you could theoretically spin that as a as a benefit then, because that means that while time passed normally for everyone else, your your actual existence was stretched out. So, for say a shorter lived race, that might extend their lifespan. I I can't see how that could be considered at all hostile local environment. So there's there's that. Um. God damn, you are fucking good, Ashley. I like that a lot. See, now the next thing I think I got to do is if I can, if I can figure out what this is and go into business with it, I, I might actually be able to make some money, right? Selling that as a service to people. I, that is actually a great idea. Um, well, it's it's an idea. At the very least, uh, I would consider waiting until the federal work lawsuit is resolved. Uh, you did mention that they are trying to take you for all you are worth, and no judgment. For, forgive my bluntness here, but that doesn't seem to exactly be a concerning amount. Oh no, um, I, no offense taken. I mean, I'd have to go into business with other thing, this other entity. Right, and start getting some clients and start making some money before I was actually worth anything. Oh, okay, that might be a, a little too harsh on, but I mean, before I had any uh, liquid assets, I mean, I do have these two stools oh. and, and this table, and uh, well, the, my hand cross was my sister, so that that's not really uh, a, a traditional asset. <laughs> Yes, and as an apparently, as an apparently living, but certainly intelligent entity, uh, that would be outside the realm of anything feasible anyway, unless Federal Work Industries is uh, in the the dark business of indentured servitude at best. Um, so it it may be to our benefit here if Federal Work cannot be convinced to drop the suit. It, do you do you mind if I you you mentioned Melissa went down that tunnel? Would you, uh, given that this is your home, consent to a small search? Um, I would. I have my my friend Quetzal here. Um, let me, if if you will allow, I will uh, send him to investigate, see if maybe there is some sort of sign that he can pick up of this individual. Um, if there's no threat, then certainly the claims by federal work industry that there is a dangerous environment is unfounded at at the very least oh oh listen uh Sashel, uh mi casa is su casa uh, not only are you my attorney but uh as soon as uh, your dad agrees we're going to be brothers so by all means send uh, whatever you want down there to investigate all right let me just let me just get your little sweater off here quetzal okay just that that hallway right there you know, till you can't, till you, till you can't find my, my, my mind anymore. And then just, I'll, I'll bring you right on back. Okay. Where, where'd you find that cute little snake that you traded? Uh, that is that Quetzal was a gift from one of my fellow franchisees at acquisitions incorporated. There was a early in our adventuring career, an incident with some snakes that caused a certain amount of confusion between them. And as you've said, my, uh, appearance here so is a gesture of apology one of my franchisees procured for me quetzal as a gift and he is now a 
through the grace of my benefactor, a, a familiar. Well, that is exceptionally sweet. Uh, what very nice uh, fellow employees you have. Uh, sounds like a, a very friendly adventuring group. For the most part, yes. There are some issues, but what family doesn't have issues, right? Yeah, I hear you. Uh, I mean, D- David plucked her eyes out. She did what now? Yeah, uh, the first adventure group I was in, Deva uh, intentionally had her eyes plucked out because she thought it would make her more powerful. Well, that is that yeah. is certainly a decision to make. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, did it out of curiosity? Did it, did it work out? for this Deva person? Well, that's hard to say. Uh, She certainly gained the ability to sense anything that was in, I don't know, like 25, 30 foot radius, it seemed. But uh, she did basically give up the ability to read as a result of that, which uh, sounds like sort of a bad deal. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, that would be real bad in your line of work, wouldn't it, uh, brother? It. Yes, it would certainly make my job difficult, Leander. Um, now, is there anything else that you can think of with Fettelwork Industries that might be a standout part of this particular suit that we would need to resolve? Uh... Nothing really comes to mind. They uh, really just want to pin Melissa's disappearance on me. Uh, They want to take absolutely everything I own. And, uh, you know, as, as I guess a way to compensate her family or compensate the company for loss. I don't know why they want it, but, uh, I'm 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 feeling more confident than ever, right? That uh, that's not going to happen now that I've got family on the case. Hmm. Tell me, given the current financial situation in which you find yourself, have you considered simply acquiescing and settling the suit for, as you said, everything you own, which, uh seems to amount to these two somewhat sticky and slightly unstable stools, the table and that whisper jar. They, oh, we, no, that, that they no, I, I think uh, we should probably clear that up. The whisper jar is not mine. The, that, that's on loan from Federal Work Industries. I see. So other than these two stools, the table and the clothes on your back is there any other asset that they might no that's it uh how worried do you think i should be i i I think we can resolve this fairly easily um i am receiving word my my familiar quetzal has reached the edge of our range and there is absolutely nothing down that hallway there are there, there there aren't even any turns it's, right, that's what just I, a straight. That's what I'm telling you. That, somebody get lost. Right, that one's straight. The only other way is straight. Like I, 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 I don't know what happened. It, 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 astounding to me. I mean, the only thing I can figure is maybe she didn't want to work for Federal Work Industries anymore, and 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 she just bolted out of here. How, do you, do you do you know how deep the water is here? Like, oh uh, no, is there a possibility. I, I wouldn't recommend swimming in that. Oh, no, I I was not going to, nor would I even send Quetzal into it. I just meant, is there a possibility that she disappeared beneath the water? Oh, well. I mean, I guess. I I always just sort of figured she had some uh, sort of teleportation thing. But, you know, now that you mention it, uh, one of my earlier guests, uh, uh, Mr. Gord, had, uh, he did mention that he actually found himself in this pocket dimension by by jumping into puddles, so uh, maybe maybe so I, there are 
th th there are what you're saying is unprotected uh, entrances and exits to this pocket dimension. So it's entirely possible also that this Melissa person simply found herself into or found her way into another realm where perhaps she is safe and sound. Oh, yeah. I mean, half of the people that show up here, I, I have no idea how they got here or how they leave. Hmm. And has Federal Work Industries indicated to you that they have done any sort of actual search for this person? No, as best as I can figure, they're, they're just trying to pin it on me. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't think you have any reason to worry here. Um, even if they can find a court which would find you liable, I can't imagine that they would actually find it worth the court costs to get two stools, a table, and your clothes. Ah, well, that's fantastic news. You were able to knock this out in one. That's uh, that's great. I, I'm, I'm so happy that you were recommended and that you exceeded uh, both the recommendation and my expectations based on that. So uh, I guess I'll... Uh, you know, see you at the next family dinner. And uh, what, uh, tell me, what uh, is the like family gift giving policy for the holidays? Uh, anything I need to know? Gifts are generally handmade items. Um, Kriv and most Dragonborn are very keen on mastering some sort of creative art. Um, tell me, with, if, uh, when this issue with federal work industries is resolved, here, here, here you go, Quetzal. Here's your little um, Look at that guy. What a cute little guy. Oh. You, uh, you mentioned this other um, potential business venture that you might get into. Have you considered the legal paperwork that would be necessary to protect you and your business interests should you continue to have guests for both this uh, interview show you're doing down here and also the individuals who might take you up on the time slowing life extension you'll definitely need to workshop a name for that right in like some sort of contract that says you give me x amount of gold and i'm going to toast or we're going to slow time for x amount of time something like that uh yes but also that covers any potential liability from harm that may result or Another potential Melissa situation of somebody simply disappearing into what could be an alternate universe. That sounds awfully complicated. That's probably something you're going to have to talk to uh, Leonella about. Okay, I, I will do that. Uh, if you are interested in retaining legal services, I can certainly set up a retainer fee with... Uh, how, how do I actually speak to your sister well uh so, here, here's here's here's, here's what answer. right here's what we'll do we'll uh uh take a pause here and uh i'll uh, i'll have to act as interpreter she she speaks through me but uh, uh you just ask any questions you want and uh she'll be more than happy to answer how does that sound sounds great um all right, you know what? Uh, just so it seems more like uh, an actual conversation, I'll put the old crossbow right up on the table, and uh, you can just address her directly, and I'll just be over here just uh, acting as interpreter for whatever she uh, she actually says. Uh, uh, okay, um, although that might be something, uh, given the sensitive legal nature involved, that would be better done without the whisper jar. I do want to... Uh, circle back around to one other thing uh you mentioned needing assistance with the um the the entity that you would be calling upon to provide this service of time dilation um as i said i i don't have any expertise in that realm myself however my benefactor does provide me with a certain amount of information there is an individual in uh and actually you seem to be perfectly situated to uh call upon this person they are in another realm upon which my benefactor can scry you may be able to contact this uh gray of pretoria who seems to have 
I suppose, a certain amount of expertise in matters chronological. Well, that sounds fantastic, and uh, I will absolutely uh, reach out to her just as soon as I can and uh, try and nail down the what exactly this entity is so that I can reach out for this uh, very exciting uh, business opportunity. And uh, I certainly think you're right that, you know, based on uh, the sensitive nature of the ins and outs of all the legalities of making that work, I'm probably going to want to turn off this whisper jar uh, so that uh, Beckmo did and Federal Work Industries don't uh, hear about it and try and snatch it out from under me. Oh, uh, yeah, no, let's, let's turn this off right now. I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to have to try and break it. We've just been talking about it, uh, into the whisper jar. Uh, yep. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not, gonna... not the first time that an open whisper jar has come back to haunt me. So I, I, I apologize for that. Uh, no, no problem, but uh, I appreciate you bringing it up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn this thing off and uh, uh, see, see what I can do to uh, alter the contents. Uh, thanks, buddy. Yep. No, no, no problem. Uh, see you at the holidays. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will uh, do my best to pass that along. Again, uh, if I need to contact Leonella, is there a way to do that from outside or do I have to come down here? I pretty much got to come down here, pal. Okay. Well, we'll figure something out. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe I could hijack a, uh, one of these Federal Work Sending Stones and send you off with one of them. I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. How about that, everybody? Not only has Zatchel ended not one, but both of my legal troubles, but uh, it looks like I may have secured a new father and family for myself and Leonella. That is some truly exciting stuff. Not to mention, got this great new business opportunity that uh, we're not going to speak of very much right now because everybody's listening. But keep your fingers crossed and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll uh, become a media mogul myself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, regardless of the legal troubles being gone, regardless of business opportunities looking up, we're still uh, upset that there has been no sign of or word from Melissa. It is uh, always a shame when an individual goes missing. I know more than most, both of my parents having gone missing. So we are going to continue our search for her. In addition, I mean, how great is Ashel? He helped out, gave me a lead on this uh, individual gray that uh, if I could track down might have some insight as to what the hell went on last week because that shit was crazy uh, hopefully I'll be able to find him or her or them or whomever and uh, they can shed some light on this and we can just knock out another item of weirdness from the steam belly list uh, so until next time, Leonella!